Coming up, a motorbike accident leaves a woman with severe head injuries. Complaints of pain in her left knee, left elbow. Can't remember anything from today. A diver is brought back to life. I started breathing for it, you know, breathing into it. And the team are tasked to a beachfront batch where a man has hit the deck hard. Tim, do we want you to have a bit more? Yeah, have a, Here we have go. a few puffs. My name's yeah. Rusty. So just while we're going to move you in that, we're going to use this. In code one. In mission one, the Auckland-based helicopter is responding to an urgent call-out. So I'll go back in our five and then turning out to the right. Roger, copy. Fifty-seven-year-old Bronwyn has come off her road bike after hitting loose gravel. She has sustained a head injury and needs immediate hospital care. She is located 17 minutes east of Auckland at Amodio Bay. Really busy time of the year between Christmas and New Year's. Lots of people camping. There'll be lots of calls uh, to watch out for people, animals, cars, umbrellas, etc. So um, we just have to make sure it's a well controlled approach into a good, safe area uh, to meet the ambulance. So hopefully, fire will help to sort that out as well. I've got the fire truck sighted. Yeah, sighted. Also, wires on the other side running across there. Yeah, sighted. Little span there. You're clear right to it. Roger. That's fine. You're gonna push forward a bit. Good position. That'll do, eh? Yeah, man. Then you clear out. Dr. Emma and intensive care paramedic Marcel head directly to the ambulance to get a handover from the ground crew. Today, this is the Sarah Bronwyn. Slipped off her motorbike, complains of pain in her left knee, left elbow. Can't remember anything from today. So we shut down and then we can do a full assessment and um, yeah, that anything good. else that we need. Yeah, sounds great. While Emma begins the assessment, Marcel talks to Bronwyn's husband, John, to get a clearer understanding of what happened. Are you this young lady's husband? Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm Marcel. John? Yeah. Docs is with her, John. So she's in a, in a serious condition. So we're yeah. just going to do a bit fuller assessment, pop an IV in her and give her some pain relief if needed and, and some fluids if needed. Did you see what happened? No, I was in front. She was behind me and then Marley and Paul and she's coming around a corner. Yeah. Quite a bit of loose metal in the middle on the tar seal. Yeah. Down the road this way. Yeah. Yeah. She's just, just gone out like that underneath. The bike's rideable. There's okay. no... We weren't going fast. No, we okay. We the view. Yep, that's great. That's why we stayed off the main roads today. To... Yeah, brilliant. So because you guys are from Fitianga, um, we all go to Waikato Hospital. That's brilliant. So Hamilton. Brilliant. The boys are in, in, in Waikato in Hamilton. So for us, it's about a 30 minute flight. Yep. We're sitting here on the rear. Okay. In mission two, the response team have been tasked to a near drowning. 49-year-old Sophie has been found unconscious under the water while diving. Fellow divers performed immediate CPR. She has slowly regained consciousness. Her condition is critical, and she is at risk of suffering secondary drowning. The team are on their final approach to Great Mercury Island, 30 minutes flying time east of Auckland. No meaning this first play we're coming to now. Yep, that'll be the one. That's the one, is it? Yep, that'll be the one that I've gone to. Clearly. Okay. Okay. You guys are clear, Andrew. Roger. Okay, loud and clear. Intensive care paramedic Rob and Dr. Heidi soon discover Sophie is lucky to be alive at all. Hi there, I'm Heidi. I'm one of the doctors. What's your name? Sophie. Sophie. Are you with Sophie? I am, yeah. Yep. And who's the skipper of the boat? Steve Skipper. Yep, okay. And what did you see? Anything at all? Yep, I went down and got her. Yep. So she's on the bottom. On the bottom? 18 metres. So okay. On her back. Yes. Arms on the sides. No rig. Okay. So rig completely out. Rig completely out. Yep, okay. And then you brought it to the surface? Yep, when you got it to the surface, did she respond at all? No. Nothing at all? No, Got it to the boat? Breathing for it, well, yeah, breathing into it. In the water? 
Yep, okay, cool, cool. Is there, do you remember any of this at all? No, okay. What's the first thing you remember? Um, oh God, I think I was being sick or something. Although Sophie's condition seems stable, she's not out of danger. Should we have a quick look at ECG as well while we're here, eh? The team must work fast to attach vital monitoring equipment in case she begins to deteriorate. She's been diving to a depth of about 18 metres and for whatever reason has lost her rig. Sounds like this is probably a diving slash drowning uh, resulting in cardiac arrest. At Amodio Bay, intensive care paramedic Marcel and Dr Emma are assessing 57-year-old Bronwyn after she came off her motorbike in loose gravel while travelling with fellow riders. We don't need the cocoon or the, or the pelvic wrap, but we'll go for the um, red pack and, we'll, and, and the front part of the monitoring. Yeah, over here. Yeah, yeah, we'll, needs an IV and pain relief and a few other things. So. It is still unclear as to the extent of her head injury, so further assessments need to be made quickly. So it seems to be predominantly at the moment a head injury and a leg injury. This lady was riding with her husband and a group of other motorcyclists, four of them all up on a small 250, just cruising home from up north Colville Way down through to Coromandel Town, they're from Fidianga, and they've just gone around the corner and she's just slid out on some loose gravel. She's banged the head, she's been concussed. So basically we're gonna put an IV in, give her some pain relief if required, um, get some vital signs, do a very good assessment, and then take her through to Hamilton uh, Waikato Hospital. Has the status too serious? Bronwyn, just spoken to your husband, Bronwyn. So I've just explained to him that we're gonna take you through to Waikato Hospital in Hamilton, all right? What's happened is, is relatively serious and you've banged your head, you've got a few scrapes and bruises and um, they can just give you a much better assessment and um, treatment is required and hopefully you won't be there for too long. Yep, that's clicked beautifully. So just keep coming back another metre or so. One, two, three. Nine, eight, two, eight. Sorry, covering you up there. Two, eight. Okay. So this is a combi carrier, which is a really useful extrication device from the side of a road or tricky spots, and it's great they've got her on that. So much easier to get her across and then move her. One, two, three. All right? Thanks. I'm just going to come slightly towards the tail. If you can, swing around to the back door, and then just don't need to go that way yet. Let's go down. Two, three, one. Beautiful work. Guys, that's awesome. Husband John gets to say goodbye before he travels by road bike to the hospital. You're going to be fine, sweetie. Okay. I'll go back and get it. Yeah, yeah. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, just yeah, it's up there. Feel a bit funny? Don't know where I. What happened? 49 year old Sophie was found unconscious, not breathing, 18 metres beneath the water. Sorry. What I want to do is come around the other side and put a needle in your arm, okay? Her dive buddy brought her to the surface and performed CPR to save her life. It sounds like she's been resuscitated by people on the boat with CPR and um, has made what I consider to be a miraculous recovery to this point. It's a miracle she is alive, and Dr Heidi and paramedic Rob want to keep it that way. Okay, Sophie, you able to pop an arm out this way? I do. I might put that on the other side. Are you able to find a finger over there for us? Sorry, what was your name? Gareth. Gareth. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm Rob, this is Heidi. Oh, yeah. I could just Thank you for coming out. Okay, we Sophie. Had it sharp scratch in your arm, all right? Yeah. Hold nice and still for me. Sharp scratch. Sophie's partner, Gareth, was also involved in saving her life. You're doing really, really well. Just in the water with a friend. We're going to go scallop diving. And uh, something happened, I was off the other side of the boat and as I went under I lost everyone. I came back up and I saw what was going on on the surface and it had all already started by then. Um, and I, I swam over on the surface at which another friend had managed to bring Sophie up from the bottom where she had managed to end up and was clearly unconscious. Let's keep that elbow really, really straight, so straighten it right out for me. It's no surprise that they are both shaken up by the accident and it's unfortunate that it has happened before a special upcoming event. Friday we're due to get married, but uh, obviously Sophie's health takes precedent, so we shall see how it transpires, but fingers crossed she's gonna be okay. In mission three, 
the Auckland-based emergency helo was responding to a man suffering intense pain after slipping on a hardwood deck. Okay, we're supposed to two airborne out of Mechanics Bay, time of 1525. Tim Lekotua is unable to be moved after he slipped, fracturing bones in his hip and femur. The extent of the injury is still unknown. He's located at Aran Bay, a remote seaside beach located on the east side of Waiheke Island. We've got a, um, a male, we believe to be in his 70s, that um, dislocated or fractured the hip. The access is a little bit, um, can be a bit restricting, so once we get over here, we'll Tinny and uh, Roger will assess um, the ability to land. Barney, who's a, the ILS officer on the island, sounds like he's doing a good job getting them comfortable and um, organising for us to um, to land somewhere, hopefully. Control West Pack 2, we're locating. Right. Hey, ambulance up the top there. So, which flash house do you reckon it is? Um, in between where the boats are on the wharf. The dinghies. Roger, continue right. I'm going to be reasonably close. Roger, I'm going to get that tree up on your nose, up to close with 10 outside. How's that feel? Yep, levers down, I'm happy there. Both pilot and crewman must stay with the machine due to the complicated position the helicopter is in, while paramedic Russell and Dr. Teddy head to the injured patient. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Oh, good. Hello, what's your name, sir? This is Tim. 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 Seems so, like a right. single injury just to his right. Yeah. Neck of femur. Yep. It seems high, higher than his femur to me. So he, as far as packaging like with the pain relief are you happy to get him on the scoop yeah reasonably? look what we need to do is that if we want lay him down scoop him and we can I go i just got to check because of the position on the beach i just got to check with tinny that he's yep. happy to load i don't know if because that that less skid's sinking in quite a bit so i'll right. just i'll just yep. double check although tim is ready to be loaded onto the helicopter it's uncertain how dangerous the loading will be due to the position of the machine and the tide helicopter from rusty Um, we can be with you in about five minutes. The question is, are you happy to load? Forty-nine-year-old Sophie was found unconscious and not breathing, 18 metres beneath the water. We're going to give you some anti-nausea medication, just in case you feel sick. And I'm going to put a little scratch on one of your fingers just to test your blood sugar as well. Her dive buddy brought her to the surface and performed CPR to save her life, for now. Partner Gareth, along with fellow divers, have kept her stable to this point. Have you had lunch today? Well, I think I've just picked it all up, but yes. You had it? Yeah. 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 Although her condition seems stable, complications from secondary drowning could again threaten her life. We probably don't want to try and intubate and fly. No, so no, if we do no. have catastrophic failure, then we'll uh, seek to land and yep, manage absolutely. aggressively for flight. Plan is to head back to Auckland Hospital from here. Patient's stable, but concerns are in terms of the oxygen level, so we're going to try and fly as low as we can um, to try and minimise any risk of hypoxia. She has had a rapid ascent, so the helo must fly as low as legally possible. 93, 93. 24, much the same. Okay, feel all right? We've just got to drop that bag of fluid. Yeah. So 94. 94, Relatively okay. both. So, just going to have a little listen, Sophie. Just breathe away normally. Sophie's low vital signs could mean that she has water on the lungs and this would need immediate extrication. So Rob, she's got a few crackles in both bases. Okay. With her condition unstable, the team decide to move now. Just put a warm blanket over. Yeah, have, have we got the um the cocoon? I wonder how far she came they came up. Straight up. Rapid? Yeah. yeah. Although Sophie's underlying complications are still yet to be diagnosed, she's lucky to be alive. How's your nausea feeling? Oh, cool. Okay. Thanks to the quick work of her partner Gareth. We gave her a bit of CPR in the water, but clearly it was really difficult, so um from there we got her up onto the side of the boat and onto the boat and from there proceeded to give CPR. Fortunately she could regain consciousness and the boat captain had put out a mayday and uh, fortunately the services on the ground had scrambled the helicopter so obviously you had the information so um, we managed to get here on the note that there was some oxygen available 
but obviously now the rest has been in the very capable hands of these people, which I'm very grateful for. Happy for a start, Nuri. Happy for a start, Roger. Sophie is moments away from hospital where she'll receive the treatment she needs. On Waiheke Island, a complicated landing position of the helicopter could mean a very difficult departure for Tim with his extremely painful injuries. Um, we can be with you in about five minutes. The question is, are you happy to load? It would be a scoop straight onto the uh, Ferno and then um, out of there. Roger that, just confirming Ferno to stay inside the machine. Thank you. Intensive care paramedic Russell knows that this departure could be very dangerous. So Barney, I've let them know, so we'll carry him down on the scoop. Yep. We won't take the Ferno out, it'll be a straight load into the back, yep. and we'll be out of there. Yep. Tim, do we want you to have a bit more? Yeah, have a, have 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 a, a few puffs. My name's yeah. Rusty. So just while we're going to move you in that, we're going to use this. So you keep taking big breaths in there. The key with that is, is it wears off really quick, so the sore it is, the more you breathe. Can you roll onto your back slowly? We're good, man. I'll, I'll do your head. Yep. You just hold that. Good man. Great. Big press. That's it, Tim. You're doing well, mate. Good. Oh, I think it's that. Tim's excruciating pain is caused by a very serious break in his hip or the top of his femur. Just relax. We'll, yeah, we'll hold the leg for you. Out. There we are. Just, that's it. Just relax. Right. I'll hold the pillow and pull him down. One, two, three. Oh, we're all good. Oh. All right, I hope we've got some blood. strong man to carry. Yeah. Barney. Barney's going to carry it, okay, because uh, probably, yeah. He's obviously very sore. Um, Barney's done a good job. He's given him some um, some pain relief, and we're just going to move him. Flat. Are happy? One, yeah. two, three. And we'll go nice and slowly. Tim is on his way to the chopper. And with the quick assistance of crewman Mark, he is loaded smoothly and easily. It's a short flight to reach Auckland Hospital, where Tim will be assessed and helped by the ED staff. We're straight rescue two. Airborne out of our bay, POV 64 Auckland Adult ED, an ETA of uh, 1 3 minutes, 13 minutes. Fifty-seven-year-old Bronwyn is en route to Waikato Hospital. She's suffering a head injury after crashing her motorcycle. I'm just going to give her some anti-nausea medicine. Last thing we want is a vomiting en route. It is a bit of a bug, yeah, but it's all right. Hi. Yeah. Anti-nausea medicine coming up, okay? Yeah. So four of you in the back. So six POV and secure in the rear. Roger. There's no real reason for the accident. Nah, it sounded like just a bit of loose grit, gravelly stuff. Slid along the road, ended up on the side, um, and you can see your helmet was badly scraped, so that took quite a knock. Without the helmet, she would be pretty serious, if not here, so. Hamilton Tower was back, rescue two, finals. To land, Waikato Hospital. We're back, rescue two. Good one. Very good. Awesome, thanks, man. Clear doors. Yep, yeah, thank you. Wonderful. There we are, a bit of fresh air. Uh, a firm page of cell phone, swipe card. Patients in the recess room now with um, the team, doctors and nurses, doing a full assessment. The concern was around the concussion she sustained and, and if there's a small um, brain bleed going on, but the rest of it was pretty straightforward and she's very stable and, and in a good condition and in good hands. So all going well. She'll be back before New Year's Eve. Enjoying that. Three weeks later, Bronwyn was back in the Coromandel with her husband John, unable to recall what happened on that terrible day. She is grateful to be alive, thanks to wearing the right helmet after an accident which could have claimed her life. Basically, I face-planted from what I can see. Um, the damage that's on the helmet is all on the front 
and slightly to one side. If I hadn't been wearing a full face helmet, then I think I would have been in a much bigger mess than I was, especially the top part of my body, <laughs> my head. But the accident wasn't without injury. Sprained ankle, fractured the head of my femur, fractured my just below my elbow and concussion. Went to work after, back to work after six weeks. I still don't have any memory of the accident. And that's where her husband John reminded her of the ones who helped her to safety. Once everybody else came in and took over, I just sort of backed off and went with the flow, but they knew what they were doing, it was their job. Um, you leave it to them. It was very concerning, because it was my wife. She kept asking what happened, what happened. I think that's the reason why they flew her out, was she kept asking what happened. You could tell her, and then she'd turn around and tell you straight, ask you straight away again. There's the golden hour, right? So seven minutes in a helicopter, which could have potentially taken two and a half hours if I'd gone by road, that's got to be a major in as far as saving lives is concerned. If I hadn't had the Westpac chopper there, it could have been a whole lot different. And she will continue to live life to the fullest regardless of the risks. When you're on a motorbike, it's a when, it's not an if. Um, so I'm hoping that this is my win, but I still don't have any fear. It's perhaps made me more cautious, and and I'm also aware that you can't help if, if somebody else does something, but I certainly don't have any fear of getting back on the bike. In fact, I'm looking forward to it. Sophie was cleared of secondary drowning, and both her and her partner are thankful for her amazing rescue and could move forward with their planned wedding. Tim needed surgery to repair his fractured femur. He spent eight days in hospital and has since made a full recovery. And Bronwyn knows that living in the Coromandel comes with its challenges and thanks a service that makes the community feel more secure and accessible. To have that service available with such access to these remote areas is huge. It's, it's our lifeline here.